Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all uh, to the 16th lecture of uh, the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, this is overall 16th lecture and uh, it is 4th lecture of module 5. Uh, so, today we will talk about uh, coping with meditation and mindfulness. Uh, before we talk about uh, today's lecture and its contents, uh, let me have brief recap of the last lecture. So, in the last lecture that is lecture 15, which was the third lecture of module 5, uh, we have discussed about uh, no, coping with social support. So, and we have uh, we tried to understand that you know social support is very important factor in terms of you know uh, as a coping resource in terms of dealing with stress and overall you know overall our uh, both physical and mental health. Uh, primarily because you know uh, we as an individual has have certain resources uh, that we can use to deal with a stressful circumstances or a life crisis however uh, many times these individual resources are not good enough to deal with a situation so social support kind of you know the resources of other people adds on to you and as a result your uh, resource uh, increases and as a result you are able to deal with the situation uh, we have also discussed different types of social support in the last class uh, primarily we have discussed you know tangible support in terms of material support which may include you know money services goods etc then there are informational support which uh, uh, in the form of suggestions advice etc uh, then there is an emotional social support which includes you know uh, showing sympathy you know kindness empathy mm -hmm. love love and care etc and last we have discussed invisible social support where you know somebody gives a support to a, a person and the recipient is not you know consciously aware about the support so we have discussed all these different types of support and uh, we have also understood you know that you know all these supports are necessary at different stages of life and some people are better at giving this support certain specific type of support as compared to other support so, uh, we have also discussed various kinds of uh, empirical findings and research finding that shows that you know social support is important uh, in terms of coping with stress and overall for our health. Uh, it has a positive impact on our health and well-being and uh, primarily it does all the beneficial functions uh, by positively impacting our physiological aspect such as you know. Uh, it reduces you know cardiovascular functions uh, it uh, you know reduces stress related hormones it increases our immune functions and so on and also it increases health related behaviors also no uh, such as you know eating healthy diets doing more exercise etc so in that context we have discussed there are two hypotheses one is direct effect hypothesis where we said uh, that you know social support is helpful in all conditions not just only stressful circumstances and buffer effect hypothesis which uh, uh, which uh, which proposes that you know social support is primarily important at the time of high stress situations so research kind of you know uh, showed support to both the hypotheses depending on the circumstances then we have discussed you know social support and network analysis using you know convoy model of uh, social network analysis where we said you know there is convoy basically means a group of people who moves with us in the journey of our life uh, throughout our life they are they are called as social convoys and the people in the social convoy or the network uh, they differ in terms of closeness in terms of their quality of relationship in terms of their functions and uh, we also try to understand that you know 
using this convoy of social support or, or model where no, we can use by using concentric circles, we can find out you know, people who are in their inner circle closest to us, then middle circles who are little bit uh, away from the inner circle and the outer circle people who are still important but not that close. And we can do this exercise in, in order to under, understand and find out uh, the deficiencies and the, and the quality of our social support network. And at the end we have discussed how can we build social support. Uh, we have uh, tried to understand primarily the two, uh, two constructs, uh, two approaches that we have seen is that uh, one way of building social support is you know uh, 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 the increasing I mean uh, identifying and improving the deficiencies in the existing, uh, existing social network and building new connections including connections with the pets. So, we have discussed some of the strategies in the last class. So, today uh, we will talk about coping with meditation and mindfulness. Uh, so, in that context we will discuss some of the key concepts uh, such as you know meditation and its types various types, uh, the concept of mindfulness, then we will discuss therapeutic effects of mindfulness and its mechanisms, how it influences or impacts positively to our know various aspects of functionings. Then we will uh, briefly give you, you know, instructions for how to do mindfulness very brief exercise. So, let us start. So, so meditation and mindfulness nowadays this thing this uh, exercises and practices are very popular and uh, it, this kind of practices are common to almost all religious and spiritual tradition. Earlier it was more focused or more connected with the religious and spiritual traditions. Uh, all the religious and spiritual tradition had their own ways of doing meditations and mindfulness exercises. Uh, and people used to use these exercises for diverse purposes you know such as you know healing in terms of physical and mental healings. Uh, people used to use meditation for getting uh, insights into their inner mechanisms and how their mind functions, how their emotion functions etcetera. And also people used meditations for getting enlightenment uh, in terms of you know uh, liberation and you know, illuminations in various uh, dimensions of life. Uh, nowadays mostly uh, people uh, it is much more common and it has come out from the religious you know circle specifically and people use it more in secular context and uh, try to use it as a kind of coping strategy uh, and to improve their health both physical as well as mental health. Uh, so, it is during 1960s uh, that, that scientific studies uh, before that obviously you know uh, there was not much scientific study in those areas, but it was mostly kind of people individually they were doing it. However, in during the 1960s uh, the scientific study started focusing on the clinical effects of meditation, how it has an impact on you know, clinical effects in terms of how it impacts you know diseases both physical and mental diseases and in terms of healing how it impacts. Uh, on health, after the reports of extraordinary feats of bodily control and altered states of consciousness by eastern yogis and uh, meditation practitioners particularly when they reach to west. So, a lot of eastern yogis who are doing you know meditation in the advanced form of forms of meditation, uh, they went to western countries and showed those extraordinary abilities in terms of the control they have over the body and the mind and you know uh, and various altered state of states of consciousness they could kind of voluntary you know uh, bring in using meditation techniques. So, slowly slowly you know scientific circles also got interested into finding out about meditation exercises and practices and uh, how it does all these things. And also particularly with the advancement of and refinement in the instrumentation uh, in terms of you know measuring the effects physiological effects, uh, scientific study and the effects of meditating practice become much more possible. 
So, in terms of advancement in the in instrumentation such as you know brain imaging techniques, measuring brain waves, uh, so many physiological changes can be detected using lot of instrument nowadays, uh, you know, they are available to detect all these changes. So, because of this advancement in all this you know instrumentation part, uh, methodological advancement, uh, so uh, people could scientifically study the impact of meditation on the mind and the body. Now, a formal acknowledgement of the academic curiosity within psychology came in 1977, uh, when the American Psychological Association issued a statement that you know me, uh, about meditation, stating that meditation may facilitate the psychotherapeutic process. They also encourage researcher to evaluate its possible usefulness. So, the largest body of psychology, you know, psychological American Psychological Association, also kind of noticed, you know, uh, the possible beneficial impact of meditation, and they also encouraged, you know, what are its therapeutic impact and to look and do more research in that direction. So with that call, obviously, a lot of healthcare professionals and researcher, uh, you know, got into uh, research into these areas and try to find out what are the possible impacts and uh, in terms of healing effects, in terms of clinical effects. So, we will see some of the findings. So, let us see what is meditation in terms of let us formally try to see, you know, because people may use this term to mean so many things, everybody may have their own definition. So, let us see what is meditation is all about. So, the word meditation is derived from the Latin word meditari, uh, which means to engage in contemplation or reflection. So, the root word is meditari, Latin word, which basically means to contemplate or reflect on something. So, word meditation can be simply used when you are reflecting on something, thinking about something, people say you are in a meditative mood. So, it can, the root word is actually that. So, the word meditation comes from the same Greek and Latin root as the word medicine. So, medicine actually also came from the same root and as meditation. So, and so you can see a connection also meditation also kind of used as a you know medicinal properties in terms of healing effects. Both uh, has their almost same root. Uh, Menocha 2000 uh, describe in 2000 uh, in one of the research paper describe meditation as a discrete and well defined experience of a state of a state uh, of thoughtless awareness or mental silence in which the activity of the mind is minimized without redu reducing the level of alertness so this is one of the definition which kinds of captures the essence of meditation so the basic idea of meditation all medit there are diverse techniques available but the basic idea of all techniques is to achieve a state where you know you remain fully alert, but your mental functionings in terms of you know intrusive and automatic thoughts and worry, worry you know, too much of worried thoughts and ruminations that happens continuously you know, in a non-stop manner in our mind. So that is reduced. The frequency of such thoughts reduces. You become fully alert, but all these disturbing thoughts kind of their frequency reduces and some people can completely stop it also in the advanced stages. So, it's, it is a thoughtless awareness. So, you become fully aware, but you know thought processes are minimized. So, you remain much more in a peaceful state. It is continuous you know chattering thoughts that goes on in your mind that disturbs you all the time, mostly because these are unnecessary random and automatic thoughts. So, if you can voluntarily control them and reduce their thoughts, you will achieve a peaceful state. So, this is what meditation does. So, you achieve a mental silence or peaceful state. Walsh and Shapiro in 2006, they defined meditation from cognitive and psychological perspective. So, they said it is a as a family of self-regulation practice uh, that aim to bring mental processes under voluntary control through focusing attention and awareness. So, they also define meditation in little bit slightly different ways, but the idea is same. So, basically by using or practicing your attention and becoming more aware, uh, you kind of 
bring all the mental functioning and processes into your voluntary control. So, they are no longer automatically disturbed. So, you have the means and techniques to kind of control them. Uh, and uh, that itself is a very liberating experience in terms of because all the disturbances are you know primarily because most of the thought processes are out of control involuntary. So, by meditation slowly slowly we can bring those processes into more voluntary control by using some techniques. So, uh, let us see what are the different types of meditation. There are diverse techniques you know uh, can be used for meditation and uh, you know nowadays maybe more than hundreds of techniques are available. Everywhere people are using different methods, different techniques to practice meditation. So, there are so many techniques, but uh, broadly all these techniques can be categorized under two broad approaches or two basic types. One is called as concentrative meditation or concentration meditation. Uh, and the second is called as mindfulness or insight meditations. So, all the techniques can be categorized either concentrative meditation or mindfulness meditation uh, depending you know on the techniques that are used or aim or methodology that is used to achieve a particular state of mind. So, let us see what are these two categories. So, the first one is concentrative meditation basically aims at single pointed focus on some sound image or sensation to still the mind and achieve greater awareness. So, in concentrative techniques uh, the idea is you know uh, you focus your mind on one thing. So, you exclude all the other thoughts that are going on in your mind by focusing on a particular one thing it could be one sound some people use some mantras and you know some traditional you know uh, sounds um, mantras from the you know, religious or spiritual tradition whatever it is. So, it could be a sound, it could be an image of something whatever it could be image of a deity or something or sensations in the body. So, you can pick particular areas in the body of sensation and focus on them. So, the idea is when you, when you are able to focus your mind on one thing or you train your attention to focus on one thing for certain extended period of time, uh, then slowly slowly your mind comes to your voluntary control because you learn to exclude everything else and uh, consciously control your mind on one thing. So, this is how you train your mind on or uh, on particular thing by using focusing on particular object of uh, meditation. One example could be you know transcendental meditation uh, which is very popular in the western countries which was introduced by Maharshi Mahesh Yogi. Uh, so, they initially start with concentrative meditation obviously later they have more uh, refined and other uh, you know, techniques which may include mindfulness aspect also. The next uh, the category or the group of uh, meditation techniques so which are called as mindfulness uh, which basically involves opening up or becoming more alert uh, to the continuous passing stream of thoughts, images, emotions and sensations without identifying oneself with them. So, the basic idea of mindfulness is a kind of just opposite to concentra concentrative meditation. So, in concentrative meditation you focus your whole attention only on one thing. So, you narrow down your focus and exclude everything else and focus only on one thing. In mindfulness you simply you know just go opposite to narrowing down you just open up yourself and become fully alert and just witness and observe whatever is appearing in the you know in your consciousness whatever it is whatever thoughts are arising sensations are arising emotions are arising and going on you know, ar arising disappearing so many things are happening you know in our mind and body structure. So, you simply become fully conscious and open up. You do not react to them, just observe the passing and you know, uh, and, uh, know arising and disappearing of various contents of consciousness. So, you do not identify with, with with whatever is appearing. So, you do not whenever a thought arises, you do not identify with that thought, thought. You simply observe it, a thought comes and it passes away. Uh, 
you do not say it is good or bad or you do not cling to it, you just observe it. Then slowly, slowly if you can remain in that neutral state in a new witnessing position, then uh, nothing can disturb you simply because you are witnessing, you are not identified with them. When you are identified with a thought, for example, a sad thought arises, you become sad simply because you are identified with that thought. So, you become sad because a sad thought came and you identified with it. A depressing thought comes and you become depressed simply because we are kind of identified with, with the whatever arises in our mind. But if you can become neutral and just observe, so a so sad and depressing thought comes and after some time it leaves, comes and leaves, you do not cling to it, so it will not have much impact on you. So, slowly, slowly the frequencies will decrease if you can at, at, you know, remain in that neutral state. So, the mindfulness is about that, you become more open, uh, you broaden your consciousness and uh, you know you become more alert to the continuous stream of thoughts, images, emotions, sensations that are arising. You do not identify anything, just observe them as if uh, as, you know as if you are sitting you know near a road and observing strangers coming and going. You are not particularly interested with anybody. So, it is like that. So, such practice helps in developing non-reactive state of mind. So, generally continuously we are reacting to the contents all the time. Something happens and uh, whatever thought comes, you react to it and you become disturbed. So, mindfulness helps you to achieve a non-reactive state of mind and which is foundation for calm and peaceful state of con con consciousness. If you continuously react all the time to all the things without really looking into uh, deeply in the situation, uh, you will be continuously disturbed. So, peaceful state of consciousness can only be achieved if you slowly develop this non-reactive state of mind. That does not mean you do not react to appropriate things, whatever is necessary you react and do that, but unnecessary a uh, lot of things. No? random and intrusive, automatic, unconscious things, you do not react all the time, you know how to keep a distance. So, here instead of narrowing the focus, which is done in uh, concentrative meditation, you become more alert to the entire field of consciousness. You just open up and, and just observe what is happening without fighting or without really you know resisting with anything. So, examples in this category include you know uh, vipassana meditations, Zen meditations, uh, these are all uh, know, from the Buddhist orientation, lot of these meditations you know, nowadays they are also very popular. So, they are also called as insight meditations, you know, because using mindfulness you achieve lot of insights into your, the mechanisms of your mind and body. So, so lot of, uh, lot of you know, techniques could be a combination of both concentrative meditation as well as mindfulness. So, you start with concentration, then you go into mindfulness. So, a lot of techniques can be a combination of these two also. So, if I uh, just show you these two things. So, meditation practices. Uh, typically of two types, one is concentrative basically you do it by having single pointed focus. then you have mindfulness.
mindfulness includes opening up and becoming alert to the entire field of consciousness. Uh, so, in concentrative meditation, you know, uh, you narrow your focus. Uh, here it is, you broaden your focus. So, these are uh, some of the fundamental differences between these two techniques, but the idea of uh, the focus or the aim of both the techniques are same uh, and uh, sometimes you know uh, a lot of techniques start with concentration and they end up having mindfulness. Uh, no technique. So, because mindfulness has received lot of research attention uh, in the last few decades, uh, because you know, um, even though people may be involved in various concentrative meditation, the ultimately you know it is the mind people engage in mind certain sort of mindfulness techniques that does lot of positive impact in the health and lot of healing effects that is done. So. Let us see in more details about mindfulness, so that we understand, you know, why you know it has received so much of research attention. So the, uh, the mindfulness uh, was primarily, you know, it's a technique from the Buddhist tradition. You know, uh, mindfulness as a technique was used by uh, the Buddhist monks and and the, Bo the Buddhist tradition of uh, the religion, where you know monks have been continuously, you know, practicing mindfulness meditation. So it's a very in terms of you know as a tech uh, no, uh, as a technique it is uh, it was already available in you know, in uh, in, a, in, a, in in our hist from the historical perspective so it was not a new thing that came up but in terms of academic research uh, obviously you know it is a new thing so in the academic circle one particular person his name is john kabat zin is one of the first academician uh, who, who introduced and popularized this mindfulness uh, based technique of uh, you know, uh, meditation in the academic and research circles. So, a lot of he started you know, doing a lot of research and looked at the impact of mindfulness on various aspects and particularly in the academic circle and the research circle. Uh, he also is the founder of mindfulness based stress reduction program. Uh, which is also very popular and uh, no, it, is, uh, give, uh, no, it is introduced in various organizations including academic organizations and the hospitals etcetera to help people to uh, deal with stress and other uh, mental health problems. Uh, so, Kabat Zin defined mindfulness obviously, we have already tried to understand overall in summary what is mindfulness it is about opening up and observing contents of our consciousness, our thoughts, emotion in a you know, very detached and neutral ways. Uh, but uh, uh, Kavad's in define mindfulness with little bit more subtleties such as you know, he said mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way. So, you pay attention obviously, attention is the foundation of mindfulness uh, in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So, how you pay attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So, we will try to understand what are these components that we, he has talked about. So, based on this definition, Shapiro and her colleagues in 2006, uh, they proposed three components. So, from that definition basically let us see what are the three components he is talking about. So, one thing from the definition was one purpose which basically means intention. What is your intention while doing any practice such as mindfulness? Second component is paying attention or attention. So, this is very important attention. Third is in a particular way. So, what is the attitude while doing what is your attitude? How you pay attention? Uh, is also important while doing mindfulness. So, there are three important components in mindfulness practice. One is called as intention, second is attention and third is attitude. So, there are you know these three important components are kind of 
inherent in the practice of uh, mindfulness. So, let us see what are these three a little bit in the more details. So, intention. So, obviously, for doing anything we need intention for any activities we need to intend okay, I need to do this without intention you cannot do anything. So, for similarly for mindfulness also uh, for starting your any pra practice of mindfulness you need to have an intention that I want to do. Uh, so, what is your intention? Why you want to do, do a practice like mindfulness? So, people may have different intentions in their mind. So, people may intend to do mindfulness for various reasons such as stress reduction. So, somebody may do mindfulness for stress reduction, uh, they may do it for emotion regulation, they may do it for self exploration, uh, they may do it for spiritual enlightenment and so many purpose and aims can be there attached to mindfulness. Uh, so, whatever the intention that you have, your result will kind of come accordingly. So, intention may change from time to time. So, people may start with some intention then later it may change also. Obviously, uh, intention is always you know is a, is a fluid concept for, a, for everything our intention may change from time to time. So, research indicated that outcomes of mindfulness practice correlated with the intention. So, whatever intention you have accordingly the outcomes was achieved. For example, those who practice for stress reduction attain better coping with stress and those who practice for self exploration attain better insights into their self. So, because you know the whatever intention accordingly you give attention. So, you want to cope with the stress. So, you will your intention will be like that and accordingly you will try to achieve coping with the stress. So, similarly whatever your intention result will kind of cover it. So, your intention also plays very important role. Why you are doing it? That will set the stage. Second is attention. This is the most fundamental thing you know. So, paying attention for any meditative techniques and also mindfulness you know. It is about paying attention and attention is so important and uh, quality that without it we cannot succeed in any field of our life. So, it is the attention that help us to complete any task. If we do if we are not able to pay attention you cannot do any task. So, that is why you know paying attention is very important and in, in the mindfulness and meditation basically we train our attention how to pay attention on something and because this is fundamental for success in life for anything you want to achieve you need to pay attention. So, attention is very important for meditation practice because through meditation we practice or train our attention. So, paying attention is core to mindfulness practice. If you are not able to pay attention you will not be able to achieve that. So, this is slowly slowly we build our attention. So, paying attention involves observing the operations of one's moment to moment internal and external experience. So, you need to be alert and pay attention to whatever is appearing in the mind and the emotion and the at the body level. Uh, so, that ability to pay attention and remain in the present moment is something very important for mindfulness practice. Here paying attention includes attending to our present experiences moment to moment. So, you in the mindfulness practice you remain in the present moment and moment to moment you pay attention whatever is appearing during the practice. So, you do not try to shift too much into your past and the present you try to remain in the present moment and moment to moment whatever is appearing you pay attention to that. And this is how you need to function actually uh, because uh, you know the present is the most important moment you are actively in involved only in the present moment you know. And most of the things that we think in the past and the future are mostly at the imaginary level they have not yet happened and in the past has already gone. So, in the present moment you need to engage with things to complete it. So, in moment to moment you kind of pay attention to all the contents. So, here paying attention includes attention attending to our present experiences moment to moment by suspending all interpretations and judgments. So, in during the practice you do not interpret and judge too much for example, a thought comes you do not judge whether it is good or bad. The moment you say some thought is good and some thought is bad you are lost in that you will start fighting with it. Then you are no longer witness and neutral observer. So, that is the problem. So, this non-judgmental attitude is very important. So, you remain 
you just observe without any judging it, then it will not disturb you, it will come and go. Such attention takes us out of our non-stop wandering disturbed mind. So, in mostly we are get we are lost in our mind, too much of disturbed thoughts and emotions that comes up, we get lost in them. Uh, so, that is why you know mostly, uh, so through mindfulness we are changing that pattern. And the third uh, is attitude. Attitude here uh, basically we are talking about is you know qualities of attention or basically how you pay attention is your attitude. What is the quality of your attention? So, that is the meaning of attitude in this context. So, this is also an important aspect of mindfulness practice. Uh, mindfulness also includes paying attention to our internal and external experiences without evaluation or interpretation. So, you are paying attention, but you are not judging and interpreting all the time. You are just bare attention, neutral attention that is given. So, with some hard qualities in it. So, you accept whatever comes to your content of your mind or emotion, you do not fight with it. So, there is an acceptance, there is a patience, if you, if you do not have patience, you cannot become neutral, uh, sense of kindness, openness. So, these are the qualities of attitudes that you pay attention, but with these qualities, you become open, patience, patient, uh, you know, and then accept whatever appears, you do not fight with it. So, that is the meaning of non-judgmental observation. So, such qualities of attitude gives us break from non-stop resistance uh, by trying to push away unpleasant experiences and craving for pleasant experiences. Constantly, we are you know, fighting with our contents of our mind and emotions. We are constantly resisting if something negative happens, we constantly resist to it, fight with it, then it kind of increases much more and we crave for only pleasant things. So, this actually you know increases this whole uh, you know, uh, emotional and the mental disturbances. So, this is changed this whole process of perception and uh, you know that we normally function in a normal mode is changed by mindfulness. So, basically you know there are three components uh, which constantly interact with each other. Uh, so, if you see attention, attitude and then intention. So, they all continuously interact with each other. And this is the model uh, from the Shapiro and his colleagues 2006 model. So, basically these three components are a very important part of mindfulness and they continuously interact with each other. Now, let us see what are the therapeutic effects of mindfulness, what are the research evidences that it is helpful. So, a lot of research has actually gone into mindfulness uh, in terms of as an intervention for various healing effect, various clinical effects. So, I will just uh, briefly talk about some of them. It is not possible to include all the research findings because the literature is huge. So, the research on mindfulness has identified uh, its diverse positive impacts or benefits. Uh, some of them are uh, like you know it reduces stress, lot of research has shown that you no, know, it is an important no ways of coping with stress. It is an important technique. So, stress reduction is one you know, big area where a lot of research has shown its benefits, benefits in that context. Uh, uh, mindfulness also increases positive effect means positive emotions and decreases negative emotions such as anxiety, uh, depression and various other negative emotions. So, it helps you to promote positive emotions. It will help you to increase your happiness and you know positive mood and other things. Uh, it also improves to working memory, so it uh, memories functions much better. Uh, it also helps us to increase uh, you know, satisfaction in our relationship by decreasing conflicts in relationship. When you become 
less non reactive to un, uh, see uh, mostly automatic and destructive emotions and thoughts. Uh, you do not just you know get lost into those automatic and destructive thoughts, generally conflicts will reduce in your life. So, that is one of the important benefits in terms of you know your uh, you know, satisfaction in relationship will also increase. Uh, it research also shows that mindfulness you know increases immune functionings and physical health over you know the various parameters of you know physical health. Uh, and also overall it improves uh, well being in terms of mental well being, mental health and so many so many indicators of it. So, I could so these are some of the sample research that shows in diverse functioning areas mindfulness can has its benefits. So, let us see what are the uh, mechanisms uh, by which it does all the positive impact, why it does that positive impact. So, uh, Shapiro and his colleagues basically uh, discuss that you know reperceiving is a most important fundamental mechanism by which it does all the positive impact. So, reperceiving basically means it is you know uh, shift in perception or shift in perspective of looking at or connecting with our own mechanisms. So, there is a shift happens. Uh, so, according to Shapiro, uh, the intentionally attending with openness and non-judgmentalness leads to a significant shift in perspective, uh, which is called as re-perceiving means shift in perception or shift in uh, you know uh, perspective of look you know relating with our thoughts and emotions. So, that is fundamental uh, the most important mechanism by which it does all the positive impact. So, Shapiro et al uh, defined reperceiving as de-identifying with, con with condition judgment. So, continuously we are reacting and judging with the contents of our mind and emotions, reacting and getting lost in them. So, by reperceiving you kind of de-identify with that and become more neutral and witnessing position. So, that is the core mechanism. So, all the things when you are not identifying and you know uh, getting lost into it, their frequency decreases. So, because they do not get energy from you, it is only by identifying with them they become much more you know uh, intense and they disturb us more because we are identifying with them. The moment you disidentify, you become witness, uh, we this thing all the negative emotions and all the problematic things, worrying thoughts do not get energy from us and slowly they die out. So, this is the main uh, mechanisms called as reperceiving. So, this reperceiving help us to dissociate or disidentify from the non-stop mental drama and to witness our experiences moment to moment with more clarity and objectivity. So, you become more clear in your mind, more objective in your mind. So, this is the main primary mechanism and uh, uh, they also you know uh, explain that you know this reperceiving is a meta mechanism is, is the main mechanism and it further leads to other mechanisms or contributes to other positive effects. Uh, primarily they said four other functions that reperceiving does in terms of bringing out positive changes. One is uh, self regulation and self management. So, uh, mindfulness you know increases our ability for self regulation and self management. So, self primarily by reperceiving and reperceiving again does increases self regulation, self management. It also helps in emotional cognitive and behavioral flexibility in terms of promoting that. So, third one is value clarification and fourth one is exposure. So, let us see uh, all these four mechanisms very briefly. So, self regulation and self management. So, mindfulness promotes self regulation and self management, it helps or facilitates uh, our ability to regulate emotions and our own behavior. So, basically, this reperceiving or witnessing or disidentifying from the non stop you know uh, stream of thoughts and emotions, it helps us to connect with our experience. So, when you are lost in it, you are not able to see what is going on. So, when you have a distance between you and your thoughts and emotions, you can very clearly see and connect with them what is going on. Uh, we have more access to experiential information. We can more clearly see what is going on in my mind and emotions. 
and so as a result we don't avoid it too much when you are getting lost in it because of unpleasantness you try to avoid it and you don't see actually what is happening so it reduces avoidance and increases more access to experiential information uh, it increases our degree of freedom in terms of what to do with it and this reduces automatic intrusive habitual and maladaptive reaction patterns so we are able to control our mind and emotions in a much more better ways this is one thing second is value clarification so mindfulness helps people to identify their true values and meaning of their life primarily because uh, ordinarily we are identified with conditioned or by the outside social forces too much we are continuously reacting to the outside social forces so much and our behavior is directed by those forces most of the time so mindfulness help us to break from those influences so you clearly see what you actually want what is the, your inner potential and other things because you objectively see your inner mechanisms much more clearly and so it helps you to break from those external influences and objectively look, look at your life reflect and rediscover your true values and meaning of life so it also promotes slowly slowly it helps you to you know help you to you know find out more clearly with it, it will give you more insights into your inner values and you know uh, meaning of your life so that that also helps you to promote you know happiness and other positive functions third one is cognitive emotional and behavioral flexibility uh, this is also very important you know flexibility in, in our thought processes is very important in our behavior because if you become very rigid and you don't know you are not able to expand and adapt to a situation so when we are not flexible we are not able to adapt to different situations we are just one type so that flexibility is very important and mindfulness helps you to uh, give that flexibility it enhances flexibility at all levels mental emotional behavioral levels so reperceiving increases the clarity and objectivity to our moment to moment experiences so consequently our degree of freedom and choice to respond also increases so we were not getting lost in in it so you can observe and you know decide you can choose so there is a higher degree of freedom choose what to do in a situation if you are constantly reacting and getting lost you don't have choice whatever mind is telling whatever emotion is telling you are going with that flow but in mindfulness you regain your choice or you go regain your independence in terms of what how to behave how to respond to a situation so we become less and less victims to our environment thoughts and emotions slowly slowly we regain our sense of uh, confidence in terms of or insights in terms of uh, controlling our thoughts and emotions so that is the meaning of flexibility exposure uh, is again another technique uh, uh, which is basically used in various therapies for phobias so people who are exaggerate fear for something such as you know some people are afraid of going to lifts some people are afraid of going to you know closed spaces some people are afraid of heights so these are specific phobias where you no know, exposure therapies are helpful so slowly slowly systematically they are exposed to those things that they fear of so slowly slowly they learn to face them and as they face them their fear reduces so similarly what happens uh, the basic idea in exposure is that you know that people get desensitized when systematically uh, exposed to an unpleasant emotion again and again so because mostly we run away from unpleasant emotion so uh, we never able to deal with them so slowly slowly if you learn to not suddenly you push them to extreme situations uh, but slowly slowly if you teach people to systematically uh, get exposed to the things they are afraid of which are irrational fear and other things and then slowly slowly they master those things and they are no longer that fearful so this is what exposure therapies does in mindfulness also kinds of certain exposure therapy happens uh, primarily Uh, a lot of positive changes that are done by mindfulness uh, are by the principle of exposure in mindfulness uh, we connect directly with the moment to moment experiences so you are not running away or you are not getting lost into your emotions and thoughts you are simply observing and facing them and looking at them without judging them good or bad so you are kindly uh, you are kind of exposed to them and facing them 
without reacting. So that emotion will not have much impact also, but you are facing them also, not running away from them. Uh, and you learn to observe them without avoidance and resistance. So this exposure therapy is also happening in the mindfulness also. So this approach reduces our negative, uh, maladaptive and neurotic emotional uh, patterns such as phobias and anxiety. So a lot of these negative psychological issues may also uh, vanish by practicing uh, mindfulness. So all this mechanism may lead to many positive uh, outcomes that we have discussed, uh, why mindfulness you know, uh, uh, leads to all these positive outcomes. This could be some of the possible mechanism. So, the uh, master main mechanism is reperceiving. So, if I just draw it like that. So, uh, so mechanisms of mindfulness in terms of you know bringing out positive changes within us is primarily uh, it is called as reperceiving uh, which basically means you know shift in perception In a certain way, perception changes by identifying from the continuous thoughts, stream of thoughts and emotion. And this reperceiving, you know, does other functions such as self regulation, emotional, cognitive and behavioral flexibility. Value clarification. And the last one is exposure. So, this is how we can kind of show it diagrammatically the mechanisms of mindfulness. So, let me just uh, at the end give you a brief instruction of how to practice mindfulness. It will not be very elaborate, but brief you can get a brief taste of how mindfulness is like. Because you know many things when we just talk about theoretical aspects, you may not understand what is it you know, because you are using so many technical terms and other things. So, just from your experiential perspective in your experience. Uh, you can have a taste of what mindfulness is like. So, I will just give you brief instructions for this. You can follow that and kind of understand what is mindfulness. Uh, so, for doing mindfulness practice, you know, you can um, start with, you know, sitting in a comfortable position and in a relaxed state. So, relaxation is very important. So, try to make your body as relaxed as possible, sit in a comfortable position. Uh, so, basically you know as you be very relaxed, but very alert in an alert mentally alert state and but physically very relaxed. So, it is always better to start with sitting position because it helps you to become more alert. In the beginning of practice particularly it is helpful to close your eyes. Uh, because by closing eyes and our inward focus increases when you open your eyes you know you get distracted into so many you know objects of perception so you can sit in a very comfortable position very alert position uh, by closing your eyes so the idea of mindfulness is you know first you need to come to the present moment so close your eyes sit in a comfortable position either in a f on the floor or on, on a chair 
Now, come to the present moment by focusing or on your felt sense of your body. Just come in the present moment and just be with your felt sense of the body. Come to your body. Whatever thoughts you have, just ignore that. Sense, feel how your body feels like, how your body is sitting on a chair or maybe on a floor. What are the sensations going on? Just feel the sense of the body. Come with the body. Do not think about it. Do not think about your past or future. Just be in the present moment with your body, with the sense of your body, with the sensation of your body. Observe your body. Feel if there are any tensions, any specific sensations. Just observe them. Now, slowly pay attention to the breathing. Make your breathing as your anchor for the present moment. It is very easy to come to the present moment by focusing on our breath. So, when I am telling focus on your breathing, do not change the breathing pattern just observe your natural breathing pattern. So, breaths are coming in, going out, just observe them. So, breath is happening by itself, you are not doing anything. On its own, it is happening, you just observe with it. Going in, going out, just observe. By focusing on breath, it is very easy to come to the present moment. So, use your breath as an anchor for your attention. Once you are sufficiently established in the present moment, by focusing on your breath, you can expand your mindfulness to other internal and external stimuli. You may now pay attention to the sounds around you. Just hear the sounds, whatever sounds are there. It may be sounds of fan, sound of AC or some distant chirping of the birds whatever is there, just listen to it. Do not think about it. Do not say sound is good or bad. Just listen, just become your ear. Just hear whatever it is available. This is the meaning of mindfulness. You know? Observing, paying attention without judgment. Just pay attention. do not think, just hear. If your mind get distracted in that process, come back to your breathing and come back to the present moment, to your felt sense of the body. Similarly, you may expand your mindfulness to other sensory modalities such as smell, if there are any smells around you, you can just observe it and notice it. Slowly, slowly you can expand your mindfulness to your thoughts and images that are continuously happening in your mind. Now, just observe your thoughts and your self-talk that, that is continuously going on in your mind. Do not say it is a good thought, do not say it is a bad thought, just observe. Thoughts are coming, 
and going. They are coming and going. You do not have to do anything. It is by nature, thoughts cannot stay. They will come and vanish. If you cling to them, identify with them, they will disturb you, they will intensify. If you just neutrally observe them, without identifying as a witness, neutral witness, they will come and go, slowly, slowly their frequencies will decrease. And after a few moments, you may find very few thoughts are actually coming, because you are not becoming identified and interested and involved with them. You are not getting lost in them, just observe them. Thoughts are thoughts and images are just coming and going. Just remain as a witness, they will never stay, they will anyway vanish. So, just observe without any specific interest. So, while observing thought, you may frequently get lost in them, in some future thoughts, in some past thoughts. If such a distraction happens, come back to the present moment, observe your breaths again, your incoming and outgoing breaths. So, use your breathing as anchor point for present moment. Whenever you get distracted, start focusing on your breathing without changing them, just observe them. So, like this, you can expand your mindfulness to emotions, both gross and subtle emotions. Just like thoughts, emotion also sometimes comes, they stay for some time and then they leave. If you do not fight with them, if you do not get engrossed in them, they will automatically leave your system. So, just be witness to them, do not fight with them, do not resist them, do not judge them, just observe them. So, like this you can refine your mindfulness slowly, slowly. So, this is the state of consciousness, which is called as you know non-reactive, non-judgmental, just to witness and observing without any specific interest. So, like this you can now open your eyes and you can you know deepen this practice uh, by training your attention like that. So, the idea is you come to the present moment and observe whatever is coming up, it may be thought, emotions, whatever it is. So, you remain present, fully present in the moment and there are not much is issues in the present moment. All the problems actually happens because of our thoughts about past and future, we are never in the present moment. So, mindfulness helps you to stay in the present moment, be anchored in the present moment and observe whatever is happening. So, this is the state and this is the uh, taste that you can call hmm, the state of mindfulness. So, it can be enhanced by practice and uh, this can have lot of benefits in terms of stress management, in terms of treating mental issues and other things. So, you can have more specific guidelines and more detailed instructions, uh, they are available in, in so many websites, you can find them and uh, practice them. So, with this I uh, end today's lecture, thank you.